fifth graders. We are looking at our reading, um, the four points of our reading today. And uh, we're going to start by looking at the comprehension scheme of um, model the theme, the theme of the story. Um, what is the theme? This is the second page in your um, uh, in your booklet or in your reading workbook for the week. So it says the theme is the story's overall message. So I, to identify that we have to look at what the characters do and say and how their behavior affects the events of the character. And then finally we look at how they change. Those types of things will help us. So what they do and say, how their behavior affects other events and other characters, and then they change. So in our shipped out story, we have a situation where she starts out, my name is Libby Kendall and I'm a prisoner of war. Well, not really, but some days it just feels that way. So what does the character do or say? Libby says she feels like a prisoner of war. Secondly, she says, mom says it's just for a few months while she works a double shift at the clothing factory. What happens to the characters? Libby's father has gone off to war and her mother must work. Okay. Again, something else that seems to be feeling the character feels it seems no one appreciates my creative contributions to the war efforts, but Aunt Lucia says my help to her is important since both worker, both her workers join the army. So Libby's idea to help the war efforts are not appreciated. That's how she feels. But then we have a, another thing where Aunt Lucia needs Libby's help at the bakery. So there's a situation where even though she feels like she doesn't appreciate Aunt Lucia needs her. So overall, let's look at it. She feels like a prisoner of war. She feels like she's not appreciated, but her parents, her dad went off to war, her mother must work, and Aunt Libby says that her contributions are really helping. So the theme is Libby realizes she is making contributions too that by the end she sees that it's important. She helps her to see the importance of the work that she's doing. Okay, so when we look for the overall theme, we want to look for what the characters do and say and how that actually affects other people and then how, what do you think the author was trying to get across and shipped out? Okay, that is what we call the um, the theme and that helped us to understand a little bit more. Um, summarizing, when we look at summarizing, we want to put things into our own words and you look at the details at the beginning of the story to help you understand the setting and the plots. It should not include opinions. So when we look at it, again, we look at, um, she says, just like my dad, I packed up things and shipped out. So she's moved and her Libby, Libby's father is, in, is a soldier in World War II. Um, and so it talks about that, um, the war part of that, because she says, I'm not, I, well, not really, just my, like my dad, I packed up and shipped things out. Unlike my dad, however, nothing I will do ever help the Allies win World War II. So we can tell he's in World War II. Secondly, I'm trapped in a little apartment above my Aunt Lucia's bakery downtown. What does that tell us? Libby has moved to her aunt's apartment. Okay, so her father went to war. She's moved into her aunt's apartment. It seems nobody appreciates my contributions to the war effort. She feels like no one appreciates her. Aunt Lucia has help, says my help to her is important. Her aunt told her her efforts are important. And so to summarize it, we look at these details to help us summarize. Libby's father's a soldier in the war. She's moved to her aunt's apartment. She feels like nobody appreciates her. And her aunt has told her that her efforts are important. And we can summarize that the war has caused many changes in Libby's life. Okay, 
that's that summary. In summary, that's, that's a summary. Um, you might also include a little bit more when you look at a summary, like because of the war, Libby, um, Libby had to have these changes and she doesn't feel appreciated. You know, something like that. You can add these details in a little bit, but um, write them in your own words and use the the uh, information that helps us. Okay, um, look at those events in the passage to help us to come to those conclusions. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is that genre of the week, which, like we said, is historical fiction. If we look in our books, we'll see on page 388, historical fiction. It's set in the past, usually in, um, in a typical period of some sort of the past. This one in World War II um, features realistic characters who speak and act like people of a particular time and place in the past. So, for example, the working in the bakery. Um, the soldiers going off to war, things like that. Those are realistic acts of characters. May include flashback. All right, flashback is a text feature. It's a text feature, a flashback. A flashback goes back in time and describes events that occurred before the main action of the story. So you'll hear like once or I remember when um, it may... Uh, remembering past events and so we see those past events um, in the story and it helps us to understand better the things that are maybe happening now or why a person feels a certain way or does a certain thing in the flashback we learn why Libby the main character has to live with our aunt and we get to know that okay. um, we've dealt with historical fiction books before um, Little House on the Prairie historical fiction um, things like um, the uh, Liberty Kids that's a historical fiction the, the diaries that are in my classroom um, the American series uh, those are all historical fiction type books all right, homophones. Homophones, you had different um, homophone units and spelling before, and last time in our grammar book, our English book, we had homophones. It's when they sound the same, but they're spelled differently, like war and war, need and need, read, or red and red, sail and sail different homophones. We can t determine which one they are um, by the meanings. She said soldiers wore jackets with pockets. Um, it wouldn't be W-A-R war because that wouldn't make sense there. A war would be a battle. Um, soldiers battle jackets? No. Um, war meaning to wear, the past tense of to wear. Um, and then here might not may need for war survival, uh, war being the battle then. Here we have need and need. I would say I need to finish my homework. I will need the bread dough before I shape it into a loaf. And then read, past tense of read, almost, and it looks exactly and spelled exactly the same as read. And then read the color sale that was on sale at the store and then sail like the boat um, I will sail the ship to the harbor okay so homophones we've gone over before um, you'll find them multiple places we talked about their their and theirs and the um, your and your things so um, I think that's one that we're pretty much familiar with uh, just look at the context to help you in those and um, you have workbook pages to work on. So I hope all of that goes well. And we will be back together on Thursday to discuss the main story of the week.